Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Zen Chats. This one I am extremely excited for. It's a follow-up with uh, or on Jenkins of LA and everything that's been going on there. If you haven't listened to the first podcast I did with Jenkins of LA, as, as, as it was back in, uh, I think, January, go back and listen to that one. Um, but I'm pleased to be here with Safa and Valet Jones, two co-founders of Tally Labs, the entity uh, under which Jenkins of LA falls, among many other exciting things. And we're going to get into all of that. Um, but first of all, welcome, gentlemen. How are you both? Thanks for having us, Zen. Uh, excited to be here. I personally, from a spectator's perspective, really enjoyed you and Valet Jones' last episode. So I'm excited to be here now. I'm very yeah, excited. thanks for having us, Seneca. It's, um, uh, you, we're big fans of, of, of everything that you do. So to be on it is always like a, uh, something that we look forward to, for sure. Thanks for having us. No, I appreciate that. The feeling is very, very mutual. I've been, uh, I'm into day one and I've held a bunch and I've bought a bunch more and I've like been following uh, as much as I can be, you have a lot going on. And I think that everyone in the space that's in the space for a while gets involved with a bunch of projects and it's like, a, it can be difficult to keep up um, with all the moving pieces uh, at times. So, uh, but I've been trying to keep on top of it and that's why I'm so excited to learn more from the horse's mouth as, as it were. Um, Maybe, uh, again, like if you haven't listened to the first episode, I recommend everyone going back and doing that, but like a quick refresher, I think if you could both, uh, give me like a quick background on, on how you got into the NFT space and came into like Jenkins of LA and Tally Labs, maybe like the, the origin story of how that was born, how the two of you met even and, and started working together. For sure. Um, I'll keep it brief. Uh, we've, we've told this, this story, at, at <laughs> I'm sure, but it's, it's like one of our favorite ones. So, uh. BJ and I grew up together. We've been best friends since we were, you know, seven or eight. Um, went to school together through from third grade all the way through college. Uh, played basketball together in college, which was super fun. Um, and then post college, our careers went in different paths. So BJ went into product and software uh, at large consumer tech companies and and oversaw you know software builds at scale. Um, I went into marketing and, and brand strategy, started a, a boutique marketing agency. Uh, and we think of NFTs, you know, fast, fast forwarding to now as sort of the intersection of those two things, technology, product, software meets brand content strategy. Um, and so we sort of think of ourselves as like two sides of the same brain or, you know, otherwise one Venn diagram. Um, and I've learned a ton from, from him on that side. And I know he's learned from me as well. So um, in that sense, it's been awesome. Uh, we came into the space much like I probably most people who are listening, which is through Top Shot. Um, I think it was so many people's, you know, first entry into the space and it was delivered to us. The concept of di digital ownership was delivered to us in something that really resonated with us, which was basketball. Um, so it was super easy to understand. Um, from there, we, you know, just wanted to become consumers, uh, observers, good members of the community, found other projects, got rugged a couple times and just, <laughs> you know, had the true sort of experience uh, we were fortunate enough to discover apes, not at Mint, but shortly after. Um, I think I bought one uh, just like just before and, and sent VJ a screenshot of, of uh, all of the welcome messages I had gotten. Welcome yeah. ape, welcome brother ape, ape noises. And for us, like a light, a light bulb went off. And it was the first time that we had seen like community really built around sort of digital, digital ownership, but not just community. Um, like identity, right? Like a lot of people sort of were, were, were using this as their identity. And so to us, that was super exciting. And it was just like a thread that we wanted to pull on. And so uh, VJ ended up purchasing the ape that would become Jenkins Valet. Um, one thing that we always love to note is like it's a floor ape. And that's really yeah. cool to us. We didn't go for the, the most rare ape. We went for one that looked like he had a story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and so VJ being, you know, an entrepreneur and, and, a, and a creative writer um, whipped up, you know, 500 words introducing Jenkins Valet to the world. And uh, we posted it to Twitter and we were off to the races. Um, and that's really, you know, we can obviously from there, you know, we can talk a lot about sort of the business and how it's evolved. But it started off as like a storytelling project. Um, Jenkins is the valet, right? So he sees things, he hears things, he practices discretion, um, he, he does odd jobs for patrons. Um, and largely, you know, for the first month or two, we were just telling stories about other apes that we met and helping other people like add depth to their characters in the way that we have. Um, and I won't spoil it too much, but if you fast forward to now and what we're doing with Azerbala, that is like still at the core of what we do is, is we want to give people the platform to, to turn, you know, their IP into, into characters. And so, um, that was, that was sort of how we, how we entered the space. And then from there, 
the writer's room was born and you know obviously we, we decided to turn it into a business but uh, yeah it was just two friends wanting to like embark on a creative endeavor um, and wanting to you know pull on the thread of like IP ownership and, and creative you know storytelling in Web3 I love that so much it just shows like the power of of Web3 right there it's something that's so small like an idea that you can, can start there and, and grow into something like massive it's been like what has it been like 18 months, if that, probably less. Uh, and, you know, Jenkins of LA is, is basically a household name in the space now. Like, I would wager 90% of apes know Jenkins of LA. Many more people in the space are aware of Jenkins and, and his story and the entire ecosystem that has uh, been created around him, which is, I mean, it's a testament to the two of you, honestly, and, and like, but as well as the other sort of people who followed along and, like, wanted, wanted to have stories told of their apes i think it's like this this primal thing right where we 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 as humans want to like tell stories and listen to stories and i think that that's something that you've i think captured better than anyone in the space so far that i've really been aware of which is really it's just been cool to see um and and so let's dig into a little bit more about like again i i'm so tempted to go back through everything once again but i have to remember that we we've done it um, you mentioned Azobala, and, and that's something a lot more recent. You um, revealed the website. I think we touched on it uh, last time we spoke, but you revealed the website, I think it was like six weeks ago, or like that's what my brain is telling me, one or two months ago. And it's this beautiful, immersive experience where, you know, you go to the website and there's like birds chirping and you're like transported to this world. Um, can you maybe talk through sort of what Azobala is and how that fits into this whole ecosystem where how did you get from Jenkins of LA, this ape with a story, to this whole world. Yeah, totally. Um, I think, by the way, we, we launched the Azerbala website like about 20 days ago, which, no which is, six weeks in, <laughs> is, six, is six weeks in crypto time. Seriously, sure. I was, that is uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's like the law of Web3 is no matter how often we're all like time flies, uh, like it, 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 you never get used to it. Like time is truly warped. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, a bit about Azerbala, you know, we, um, we've been really fortunate to have the opportunity to build a character inside of the BAYC. Um, we, we got so much support, um, from you guys. I mean, Jenkins is one of the original like grant winners from, from way back in like June of 2021, just like highlighting the stories that Jenkins was telling, but not only from, from, you know, the founders, but also from the community of ape holders, um, like yourself, Zeneca. I mean, I mean, for folks who just like have all sorts of really, um, interesting ideas and are so creative and are so welcoming and Jenkins is, is Jenkins stories, are stories about other apes. They're stories about, you know, apes who, um, whose holders had really awesome ideas for who they were and like what those characters could be. And they told them to us and then we turned them into stories and we posted them to social. And, you know, even through the book that, that we just dropped as an NFT board and dangerous, um, written by Neil Strauss, that book licenses more than 4,000 board apes and mutant apes to appear in the work in different capacities. And so we've learned a lot about building a character inside of a world. And at some point, Saf and I looked at each other and we were like, you know, Jenkins, he's a storyteller. And he uh, certainly, you know, his day job is he's the valet at the Board Ape Yacht Club. But there must be like other places that Jenkins has gone or will go or people he'll meet and, and stories that he has to tell. And so we started to imagine what it could be like to not only have a character inside of a world, but actually to have a world that Jenkins could go to that we could ideate on our own. Um, and beyond that, we started to think, you know, we've learned all this stuff about character building. Uh, what can we build to help other people participate in that journey and, and influence the content in new ways and things like that? And so through those conversations and, and a ton of hard work comes Azerbala. Um, Azerbala is the jungle capital all the way across the metaverse. Uh, adventurers have tried to reach it for, you know, uh, as long as the metaverse has existed, but no one's ever quite made it. And now Jenkins is going there. Um, he's actually on the heels of this really successful bored and dangerous book. He's been invited 
by Lady Vo, who who is the matriarch of of House Calypso, one of the like elite factions of of Azurbala, and he's been invited there to tell her story, uh, which is a huge deal for him, and uh, and and I think a, a huge deal for our community as well, because they're going to obviously get to come along and get to participate in Azurbala, and um, you know it would be it would definitely be wrong to to talk about Azurbala without talking about our entire team at Tally Labs of which there are now 11 of us. Um, we worked uh, from the very beginning with Emily Dell, who joined our team as head of story. She's a screenwriter, a fellow CAA client, um, and a world builder. And Safa and I gave her, um, we had commissioned sort of some art and a bit of an identity for what we imagined this world being. We had this concept of Jenkins needing to travel. Um, and we, we really had a vision of like a jungle um, very earthy, but like shot through with tech. And, and she took that and created an entire world Bible that you would normally go and take and, um, and sort of pitch, I think like around Hollywood. And instead we're bringing that to market as a web three property. Um, but, but beyond Emma, I mean, it is a, it is a full team effort across, um, software engineering, design, content strategy. Um, thread guy, our director of vibes has his fingerprints all over Azurbala. Um, and so we're really proud as an entire team of like all of the work that has gone into creating that world. And Saf, I'll kick it to you. I mean, I think talk a bit about like where we're going and how the community will be able to participate. I feel like is, uh, something that either one of us could probably like take up the entire uh, time talking about. And so if, if I don't pass it, I, you'll get me ranting sort of for the rest of this conversation. I'm excited to hear yeah, I mean, when we were thinking, and, and VJ, jump, like, jump right back in for sure. When we were thinking about um, like what separates us as a company, um, we think that uh, well, number one, like we're we're the guys who we're the team who made Jenkins, right? So we're the team who knows exactly what it's like to build a character inside of someone else's universe, and we thoroughly thoroughly believe that like right now the knock on IP is that oh, it's only for one percent because 99 percent don't have the time or the resources or the wherewithal to actually do anything with their ip and our sort of our response is like that's that that may be true but like we're going to build those things and so because we know exactly what it's like to build a character inside of someone else's universe we want to give the members of azurbala like the very that opportunity right and so it's something that's been really important to foster from the very beginning we haven't even released the pfps yet and there's already characters emerging on twitter there's bakers there's leather makers someone just started a sports league like we want like jenkins was born out of just like storytelling and entrepreneur entrepreneurial sort of spirit and we we want the holders of azurbala to take those same liberties and so where our product team is like watching intently how people are interacting on social and they're thinking, what can we build to enable these people to bring their characters to life in a bigger way? Stuff like that. There's people who are already teaming up. You know, there's, there's people who are building factions of their own before we even launch factions. So like um, we, I think that we combine like story and, and, and technology in like a really interesting way. I think there's, there's companies out there who are, incredibly advanced technologically there's companies out there who tell great stories i think that we sit like really nicely sort of in the middle of that venn diagram i think we tell awesome stories and like we enable it with awesome technology and so that's what we want like our moat to be we want to we want to we want to tell great stories and we want you to create them with us and experience them in like novel ways um and so that's that's sort of our vision for Azabala. There's a number of like items on the roadmap that that I don't, I don't know if we'll sort of divulge here. Um, we sort of think the days of, of roadmaps are I don't want to say over, but like uh, we've been around for a really long time, and so we feel that we have the trust from our community to to, to keep building. Um, and so we're excited. We're excited to if we don't we've we've said if there's not a hundred Jenkins valets that emerge out of Azabala, then like we haven't haven't done our job, you know. That's so exciting. I love the fact that people are already like running with it and creating their characters and on Twitter. And that is community. Like that, that, that is what it's all about, I think. And this is pre PFP. Uh, it's a hard sentence to say. Uh, let, let's maybe dig into that piece a little bit as well, because so you mentioned you dropped the, the, the books, the bored and dangerous. Um, these are NFTs. And I want I want to get into the actual drop as well a little bit later because um, we're in a bear market and like the drop was like mm -hmm. one of the few successes in this bear market. But uh, before we get to that, uh, maybe can you go through like the the mechanics of like what exactly is this book that was dropped and then um, this NFT and how does that translate into future PFPs? Because I believe you can burn like there'd be an option to burn or, or stake or something to that effect. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, so the book itself, Bored and Dangerous, um, is an NFT. Um, we're also working with our literary agents at CAA to um, secure like a more traditional publishing deal. But uh, it was really important to us that this Web3 work that was created by a group of like 3,000 native Web3 folks, part of the writer's room, um, came to market first as an NFT. So the book was written by 10-time um, New York Times bestseller, Neil Strauss. Um, the art, the, the book NFT art was done by MBS JQ, who's a top 20 grossing uh, artist on Super Rare. And there's a track, uh, there's actually three different beats that play on different versions of the book um, that were all cut from, from a beat that uh, Murda Beats, who's a Grammy nominated producer who, who we're big fans of, did. And so the reason that I say that is just because for us, this, um, this book it is a really big deal. It's the first time that a massive group of people have all collaborated from all over the globe to source like creative direction and work together. And all of that was sort of gated by, um, you know, writer's room NFTs. You, you needed to have a writer's room NFT to get into the virtual writer's room where you could, um, you know, impact the book. And, and so attaching like as many amazing artists as possible that could like live up to, to the community um, was meant a lot to us. And, and, uh, that book is going to be able to first be read um, on a custom e-reader that um, that we're making ourselves. Um, our head of product, Robes, and our head of engineering, um, OP, have been working really hard to bring that to life. And so that'll, that'll come soon. And folks will be able to connect their wallet and read the book uh, in this really like awesome native Web3 e-reader. All the characters are NFTs, right? Because they're apes and mutants that were licensed to the work. So you'll be able to sort of see more about them. Like they, they come to life a little bit. Um, but that, that's just the book side. Uh, the question was like, what, what can you do with it besides that? And it's one of the things that we're most excited about with like NFTs is that a book is not just a book. Um, a book is also sort of like a game piece. Um, you can burn the book or you can stake it. Um, I'll touch very briefly on staking because I think the burning is a bit more complex. Um, Tally Labs is incubating a DAO called Hawthorne. Um, we will be members of Hawthorne, but Hawthorne will be a decentralized group of people um, and Hawthorne will have a life of its own. Um, the way that you will initially get uh, Hawthorne tokens and sort of get membership into Hawthorne is by staking either uh, Genesis Writers Room NFTs or a book, like a Bored and Dangerous book NFT. There's also a bit of a bonus. If you stake a Writers Room NFT with a book, you get sort of an extra allocation of tokens. You can sort of think about that like if you did a, um, like the total, like, you know, ApeCoin, if you had a, if you added a dollar, right. you got like yeah. a little bit more. So it's sort of like that. And so we're really excited about Hawthorne. It's, um, for us, it's, it's, it's a deepening, uh, of a relationship between our community and the IP that we create. We're going to be contributing, um, a percentage of Jenkins, the valet, Jenkins, the mutant, good boy, all of our characters, the Azurian legends that we're coming to market with, as well as Azurbala and, and the DAO will interact with that IP um in in a in sort of a governance model that takes it like one level further than what happens today in our in our virtual writers room on the burn side um that that's how you get to these pfps that's how you get to azurians um and i'm gonna tell it a little bit like embedded into the lore but i'll i'll sort of i'll i'll, I'll back up to explain it in like uh regular terms as well i love it so there are there are five factions in azurbala um, these factions, you can think about them as um, different neighborhoods that, that, that are in the city, but there are also different people who lead them. The cultures are different. The types of Azurians who live there are different. Their values are different, things like that. And um, the largest or the most populous faction in Azerbal is called the Sprawls. It's, um, it's sort of like the Azurian slums. And it's led, um, at least unofficially, by a crime lord named Fallon. And Fallon knows that an educated population could potentially pose a threat to him. And so um, reading books is illegal in the sprawls. If he catches a book in the sprawls, it gets burned. And so uh, holders of Bored and Dangerous will be able to navigate to the sprawls on Azurbala.com, mm -hmm. where even today you can see there's like a little bit of a trash fire <laughs> and they'll be able to burn their book. Um, when they burn their book, they're going to receive something called an Azur root. Uh, an Azur root is basically our version of a mint pass, but it's got some lore added to it. 
Um, obviously, the Azar root is, is native to Azerbala, and um, Azar roots are really like holy or sacred. Um, Azerbala runs on a currency called Mero, and the way that you um, sort of create Mero is by harvesting the Azar root and like processing it. And so anyone who has an Azar root like wants it because it could, you know, be mm-hmm. worth money or something like that, except there's this ritual that exists in Azerbala, which is before you have a child you take an Azar root that you could otherwise turn into something and you make it as like an offering to the gods. And so the monastery is another faction that exists in Azerbala and our holders who burn their books to get Azar roots will be able to take their Azar root to the monastery on Azerbala.com and make an offering in order to mint an Azurian. And so books can be burned for Azar roots, Azar roots can be burned for Azurians and all of this is gonna happen you know, throughout the summer um to to be the way that our community members turn bored and dangerous book nfts ultimately into azurian pfps every time i speak to you i feel like i want to go out and sweep the floor and get more <laughs> it's just <laughs> like i need more of these things because it's it's so cool um yeah like wow i love just the depth of the lore it's it's just like the the backstory and the detail it really is the detail that you've gone through and it's just like it's powerful it's exciting um in terms of i'd love to like dig into like the the tokenomics a little bit like how many books are there um that people will have to decide whether to stake or burn so that's actually probably a good segue too i know that you mentioned the mint which sort of yeah. occurred in the bear market we can touch briefly on like what the mechanics were and why we felt it was like a win for the community and then and then talk about sort of the burn yeah. staking um so there was, I forget the literal like exact number, VJ, you might remember, it was like 20,800 something potential like max books that could have been minted, which was uh, 20,826 20, or something. Um, it was 2,367 in a, in a uh, public sale, which was uh, a true Dutch auction with trustless, permissionless on-chain refunds. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was a phase two, which was a, a write list sale which was uh, reserved for writer's room holders, licensed apes and mutants. So there were 6,942 writer's room holders who also got to purchase in the right list, 4,075 apes and mutants, and then like 5, 000, or 500 uh, various winners of giveaways and members of other communities like Admit One that we partnered with. Um, so in that right list phase, phase two, there was about uh, 11,517 uh, potential purchased. Uh, and what we've shared and, and uh, most people in our community know this is that was not designed to sell out. Um, it was a one-to-one ratio of folks on the right list to available NFTs. And you got to know most of the people on the right list were also getting a free one as, as mm. part of owning a writer's room. So it was meant to be deflationary from the beginning. And it was a, it was a 48 hour period where, you know, people could mint sort of like at their leisure. Um, VJ, do you remember the exact from, from phase two? I want to say it was like 60 or 70% minted, something like that. 6,000 out of six to 7,000 out of the 11,000. Yeah. We had about, we had about 50, 59 or 60% who minted from that right list and which was, which was right in line with our expectations. And so you get from, you get from the free claim or the, sorry, the public sale Dutch auction, about 2,500 sold out. And then another um, six or 7,000 sold during the right list. And then we had about 7,000 that were eligible to be claimed by, by writers or members. And there were another 5,000 or so that were claimed there. And so the total supply of books is just under 15,000 now. And what was the... Um, that's a long-winded way of saying yeah, 15,000. No, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's so much detail. And I have a funny <laughs> anecdote to say after this, but like, what, what was the price that the Dutch auction ended at and then the price that the, the people on the right list could mint at. So the Dutch auction ended at 0.2, um, which was the low end of the range that we uh, we put together. And, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the beauty of a Dutch auction, right? Is, is uh, price discovery was found. Yeah. Uh, since mint, we're, you know, we don't like to financialize our, our NFTs, but um, mint is, it's a, you know, if you look at where the floor is now, it's, it's it was a great situation for everyone who minted. Yeah. Um, Phase two right list was at a 25% discount to the final resting price. So everyone on the right list got to mint for 0.15. Between the the phase one and phase two, it ended up being, um, 
I forget the exact number that, that was were physically sold, but to VJ's point, there's about 15,000 on the market now, um, which is, I think, exactly where we expect it to be. And then uh, it's really going to be really interesting to see what the, what the breakdown is of like burn versus stake. And then not just burn versus stake, but then once you burn, the breakdown of how folks who hold Aza roots versus who mint them right away. Yeah. Um, I think we touched on it briefly, but Aza roots are our mint pass. Um, and so we wanted to add some game theory to that. Uh, where your Azurian is actually born with a higher attribute, uh, which is, is called backbone, uh, the longer you hold your Azuri. So there's oh, even wow. game theory on the burn side. Uh, and, and backbone is, is sort of the, the rate and the efficiency at which your Azurian harvests marrow, which is the, the sort of native uh, currency that powers all of Azurbala. And it's what the factions are dueling over, and it's really what the city runs on. Um, so the longer you hold your Azuru, the more backbone your Azurian is, is then born with, you know, and blessed from the gods with, uh, which, you know, you would presume is, is an, ad, is an advantageous sort of thing to happen. And so, um, I think there's going to be some fun game theory there, right? It's do folks mint right away and potentially have one of the few Azurians on the market. Do mm-hmm. they hold out, you know, in hopes of, uh, not in hopes of, but to, to guarantee that they, they have a stronger Azurian. So it's going to be, it's going to be really fun. Yeah. I love projects that have like those interesting game theory mechanics that make you think and make decisions and, and that, that you can um, feel like you have you, you actually do have an impact on the outcome of, of your NFT. Uh, the anecdote I was going to get to is, uh, so I've, again, like when you're in a lot of projects, it's, it's hard to stay on top of them all. I obviously heard about Azubala and the Mint and stuff, and I, I missed the Dutch auction and like that, that happened. And then I went to the website uh, like a day or two later and I, I, I logged into my wallet that had the, and it's like, oh, I can mint some 0.15. Great. I mean, let me, I max minted, went on my business. And then like, however long later, like two or three days later, someone in my Zen Academy Discord like messaged me and said, hey, you, you have about six hours left. You can claim these things for free. And I was like, what, really? <laughs> so I like, I didn't know that I could free claim. I just, I minted at the 0.15. I was like, okay, great. Um, and yeah. And then, so I, I did it backwards. Thankfully, uh, I got in and, and, uh, yeah, I have like, I don't know, 10, 15 now. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's hard to say on top of everything, but it's also, I think that like the, the system that you designed is obviously like it, it worked and um, you know, it, like anyone who minted or like anyone who participated is in a position now where they're like, they benefited um, and had that price discovery. We, yeah. Were you like afraid at all, given the, the bear market, ness that we're in that like for instance was there a fear that the the dutch auction would not sell out and that would like catapult into bad things or like people wouldn't mint the right list or were you pretty confident given your your community i think you know anytime you have a drop you play through every scenario i i I do want to say though like we we're really confident in like the product we're bringing to market and so um as you know as confident as you can be in something that you're like really passionate about we felt that the mint was the way we we wanted it to be and so really like whatever happened from there we felt like we had done the work and we had put together like a mint process that we would have been proud of i think there there's a there's like a really important shout out that needs to go out to uh thread guy our director of vibes who who put a ton of work into um like thinking through the mint and the phases and the mm. cadence and all of that. And as a team, we have like a series of, of, you know, like principles that we believe in. And the number one is uh, deliver value back to your existing community. Like if we deliver value back to the writer's room um, and now if we deliver value back to the writer's room into board and dangerous holders and, you know, ultimately mm. to Azurians as well, like that's the, and, and value, you know, is, is a, is a broad thing and, and comes in, you know, a lot of different forms, but like, that that's our that's our community and so we designed the mint to focus first and foremost on delivering value back to the existing community and then how can we make this something that like other people can can come join because i mean we think that we're doing something special and we want to invite you know more people in who who may not you know be able to buy a writer's room nft on the secondary for more than like an eth or something like that um knowing that we had designed something that we felt did that there's not much more you can ask for right like like we went into the mint day saying like this was set up in a way that like we're proud of and and we think does that um and ultimately i think we found that that was true we we knew that the dutch auction the total amount for sale in the public sale which was 
2,367 was like, it was small, yeah. you know, like it's, it's not like the biggest number that, that certainly comes to market. And so we felt that, um, we believed that would sell out. Um, and it did, uh, we always had a plan to launch the right list a couple hours after the Dutch auction sold out. So like mm -hmm. if it, if it's sad, it's sad. And the, yeah. the, the right list would have opened up, you know, like whenever it did, um, we felt that 48 hours and, a and a 25% discount was sort of the right thing to do on the right list. And and for us, there's so much game theory. You've got, you've got burn and stake. And then, you know, what Safa was saying, you've got more game theory on Azeroots versus Azurians that we couldn't do more than one free book NFT per writer's room token because like supply would have been weird. Right. But, but letting folks come on to the right list, like the way that you described your experience, Annika, to to be able to claim in yours was an accident <laughs> but, but some yeah. people to, to some people buy were, and you know and get a free one. about it yeah. yeah to 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 buy at a discount to the public sale and claim a free was like exactly the opportunity we wanted to give the existing community yeah and just like on the on that note um it's it's generally like in today's climate with like today's technological restraints you sort of have to choose between like a really hyped up just all out gas war or like a sort of smooth experience for com your community that maybe isn't as like a five second sellout. And I think uh, we're really happy with how it went. We kept money in our community's pockets as opposed to going to, you know, gas fees, mm -hmm. which is just like a win. I think people were, people were claiming for like 90 cents. Um, obviously a lot of that is like, you know, gas is not what it was <laughs> you know, six months ago, but, but yeah. still like it's a win and FUBAR wrote a phenomenal contract. Um, one other thing that's, that's really cool to us is like, we, we um, prior to leading up to the mint, we, we didn't like get very much FUD, which is awesome. But the, the couple sort of pieces we got were that um, we were we were giving giving most of the assets and or allowing most of the assets to be purchased by existing holders as opposed to letting like new folks in. Mm -hmm. And that we were, um, you know, people were just going to have an excess. Fast forward to now, you know, on a 15,000 nft collection there's 200 listed yeah and so we knew from the very beginning that like writer's room holders like just believe in it and like want to be here and so uh like it's it's playing out hope exactly how we we had hoped because we just we know our community and we've like been ground level with them listening to them for the past like 15 months yeah no that's awesome it's just like a, a true success story um through and through since day one and then just like again through the bear market like there haven't been too many mints or collections that have sort of been success stories, even established projects have, have struggled with, with subsequent mints and things like that. So it's, it's always good to see when one does well, what's next. Like, obviously you have a whole world planned. You've got Azubala, you have the, the, the uh, burn versus stake decision and then the, the next burn decision and like all this kind of stuff. Um, but like, let's go like a year out after maybe the game theory has played out a bit. What, what does the world look like then? And, and how do you sort of see the community interacting perhaps with the DAO and the involvement there? Awesome question. Something we, we you know, spend a lot of time working on internally. Um, I'll give you like a snippet uh, of, of, you know, what things could look like in, in a year. And, and Safa, you should you know, build on top of it or talk about some of the other directions of things that will exist. But um, Tally, Tally Labs is a, is a web three media company like that's enabled by software. And so everything that we do like has those components. Um, in a year, the story of Azerbala will um, have changed. It will have matured. Things will have happened. We have a ton of story to tell. And a lot of it depends on decisions that our community members make with their Azurians. I mean, Azurians will be characters from the minute that you mint them. You'll be able to fill out character backstories. You'll be able to license them to our podcast experience. You, um, you will be able to respond to prompts and quizzes and uh, have open-ended things that exist on social for how to build out the bakers and, and the leather technicians and all of the other characters that come out um, we, we really believe that, that character development is, is what's at the center of storytelling and that web three enables character development in like a completely new way. And, and so, so much of the things that we're doing from a storytelling and a technology and a marketing and content strategy perspective have to do with telling that story and, and letting our community members impact it. Um, very specifically, uh, you know, in a year, 
we've talked about these, these five factions that exist in Azerbala. Um, and we've talked about that they're dueling over the scarce resource, which is marrow. Um, Azurians are going to have to uh, join factions and they're going to have to, to, to work together in this, in this sort of fight to um, control Azerbala with marrow, harvest it themselves and all sorts of things like that. And so you can imagine the types of things that come out of that, not only content, but Web3 gamified experiences and things like that. Um, and, and we're really fortunate to work with Board Apewood, who joined our team recently as, as director of Web3 strategy, who I think that there's like not a token that that guy doesn't own. Like he, <laughs> he, you know, he's seen it all. And so we're, yeah. every day we learn something new from him and, and, and it's, been, it's been really fun. Um, what else, Safa? Yeah, I mean, one thing that's that's not a year out, that's like a lot sooner, but but we didn't touch on is is the Jenkins audio experience. It's just a really fun one. Um, we posted a little bit about it, but we're working with an incredible um, fiction audio company called Salt, um, who's made a number of like hit fiction podcasts that have then been adapted to film and TV. Um, and so, you know, you can think of sort of Azerbala as like a property. You can think of Jenkins as a property. In some cases, they're interwoven, right? And the fact that like Jenkins will discover Azerbala, but Azerbala will remain right long after Jenkins leaves. Um, and so something will happen in Jenkins' life that causes him to have to go on a journey throughout the metaverse. Um, and so, you know, we're viewing this sort of IP as like a horizontal move across the space. So Jenkins is going to be visiting six different communities. Um, every single character that he meets along the way is going to be owned by a member of the writer's room or a partner of someone who owns the writer's room NFT and owns one of those eligible avatars. So each episode will be set in a different community. Uh, we're working you know, at the project level with a number of communities to bring these worlds to life um, in a really sort of high production, like audio way. Um, and the thought behind audio is that there's a lot of folks who are trying to do animation, um, like more power to them, but audio is like faster, cheaper, and it's just so good now that like you can build the IP in a meaningful way, prove it out, and then potentially like leapfrog some of those folks and, and go right into animation. So we're excited about that. Um, we think, you know, Jenkins as like a storyteller can evolve in like a number of mediums. Uh, we're already thinking about, you know, what the next works will look like, you know, post, post book one. Um, and then last thing is that uh, technology for us doesn't just enable the content. It also really stands on its own as something that um, is exciting to us, exciting to the space, and I think exciting to like our investors as well. Um, so a lot of what we're building, uh, we're building with uh, other people in mind. So you know, how can we eventually productize this piece of software and have it not just be something that enables Tally Labs, but you know, eventually betters the space. And so um, one example is, is the podcast. Um, you know, licensing for book one occurred on our licensing portal. And it was, you know, uh, uh, we have an amazing team. So I don't think they'll mind us saying this. Like, it wasn't the best experience. Um, <laughs> it was really novel. And we learned a ton. And it was just... I yeah, I, I mean, uh, that like it was it was it was our bad. Like, like our team, I feel like our team partially exists to like do better than we could do. Yeah. Exactly. So so coming around, you know, V2 for this podcast, it's going to be a vastly different experience. It's essentially like, you know, one click two sided marketplace where folks who want to partner with avatars can find those avatars and they could come together to solidify licensing agreements. And you can imagine that's something that is like the space is needed within the space. Yeah. Um, but our thought is like, let's bring it to market where we're the content creator um, and we're sort of controlling, you know, what one side of it looks like and we're making sure that there's both supply and demand. Um, but yeah, I would say we're equally excited about, you know, what these, what this technology stack that we're building, you know, can be for, for the Web3 space. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited for like everything that you're working on and building is like, it's going to be, honestly, I'm excited for the whole space. It's just like, I hear about cool things all the time, but like, especially everything you've spoken about it's 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 a world it really is like uh, i i felt like i've literally felt like i've been transported into another world just talking to you both and hearing this whole azabala and, and, and like everything you have planned it's 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 really exciting um last question and and this is the same question for both of you because i'm i'm just really curious um what's your favorite book and if you're a gamer what's your favorite video game um i'll, I'll go first uh one of us it's, is a way bigger book person than the other. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> um, it's I, it's on the back of my sweatshirt right now. We are book people. Um, shout out the writers' room. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you two books. Um, 
and a game, I guess. Uh, my favorite like adult book, like if I'm trying to if I'm trying to like impress someone, I guess, <laughs> is The Razor's Edge by Somerset Mom. I read it read it in college. It like blew my mind. Just like an unbelievable book for anyone who like who's listening is a book person. If you haven't read that book, like must read The Razor's Edge. Um, uh, probably honest answer is like Harry Potter. I just like it, <laughs> it's it's that's the that's like where you get like transported and you're yeah. just like oh my god like this is just an incredible like franchise and I'm a massive fan. I know yeah. what like house I'm in and all that, yeah. but I won't. I won't. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, 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 you got to What, what, then, what house are you in? <laughs> I'm uh, Ravenclaw. Okay. Which I used to be embarrassed by, but then I sort of read into it and I was like, oh, oh yeah, shit, like, I'm a Ravenclaw. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I think I'm Ravenclaw. Um, I do the tests and it tells me I'm Ravenclaw, but all yeah. my friends say I'm Hufflepuff. And I'm like, I, I think I'm offended, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Hufflepuff seems the most offensive. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Safa. You're probably a Gryffindor. <laughs> Safa's like a badass. Um, uh, my favorite game, this is a throwback too, because I'm not a massive gamer, mm. but I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. Came up with like Ocarina of Time. I think I actually sometimes uh, get some Zelda vibes from Azurbala. Mm. Like the, the, there's like a little bit of magic and like almost a little bit of technology that exists in Zelda, but like, it's also ancient yeah. all at once. And, and I think that's something that we're really like striving for um, with Azurbala is like, uh, like physics don't always exist or something. Yeah. There's like a different set of laws. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Safa. Yeah. Um, my favorite book is, is called Ender's Game. Um, uh, you read it then? Yeah. So I, I've read, uh, so this book, I, I was reading it. I was talking to my friend Jamie about it and like, so on, so on, so on. And then he just straight up spoiled the ending for me one day because he was like, obviously, I think he just assumed that everyone knows the ending. And, and I was like, no, I did not know. Um, anyway, carry on. That's horrible because it's like an <laughs> yes, iconic ending. Exactly. I, like, I was floored. Um, and, and obviously, I, I don't want to repeat VJ's answer, but um, the world building in Harry Potter uh, is just absolutely yeah. insane. And, and uh, we dream for Azerbala to like become a fraction of that. And we've taken yeah. like a ton of inspiration. Um, and then my favorite game, admittedly, I'm also not at this moment in time, a massive gamer. I played a, like a, a obscene amount of Fortnite during like the, the come up like 2017, 2018. Yeah. And I've never had like a better experience gaming. Like I just felt like what Fortnite did for the gaming space, like they really pioneered the, the free to play mm -hmm. upgrade with skins, you know, movement. Um, and it was just like, there was nothing high fidelity about it. It was just it was just cartoons. Yeah. It was, in my opinion, like the first great battle royale. So I just think it did a ton for the space. It, it blew up Twitch in a way that Twitch like wasn't, you know, prior to Fortnite. Um, so that was like, those were the glory days for me, like gaming wise. So yeah. probably Fortnite. And then Pokemon. I played a ton of, ton of Pokemon yeah. early on. We've even, there's even some like Pokemon inspo that we're trying to take with, with Azurian. So that's awesome. I would love to just keep talking about games and, and other side. And like, you, like there's so much we can get into, uh, Zen, what what what's what what's your favorite book in game? I feel like you probably oh. ask people all the time, but 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 the audience may not know yours. So I'm like you, and you you gave two books. I want to give like five, but <laughs> um, I, I for yeah, the three body problem. It's this sci-fi trilogy. Um, yeah, yeah, it's incredible. The second book is probably my favorite, The Dark Forest. It's it's it transports you to another world as well. And of course, Harry Potter. I've, I've also got to say Harry Potter. I, I, I grew up on it and, you know, we watched the videos, my partner and I, the movies, like once a year, we'll go through them all and watch them again. Um, and uh, I was going to give like an adult book answer, but I think that's good enough. And for video games, um, again, very similar to you as like, I don't play too many new games and stuff, but growing up Final Fantasy seven was like, that was my game. And that I sunk hundreds of hours into it. And like, was obsessed over it. I was at school and I was like thinking about what materia setup I want. And like, it was just like, I just couldn't stop yeah. obsessing over it. Yeah. They just did stop. a remake a couple, two years ago. I know. Right? I haven't had a chance to play it. Remake. There's NFTs coming out. <laughs> Square Enix is releasing Final Fantasy VII Whoa. NFTs in uh, late 2023. So we got a while. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Soph and I used to post up in my basement and watch my older brother play Final Fantasy. That's awesome. Yeah. That just like is a throwback for me. Yeah. So many good vibes. Um, all right. This has been a true pleasure. Um, we got to do it again sometime. Like I'm sure we will. 
Uh, I always I love chatting with you both and uh, I wish you all the best for everything Tally Labs, Azubala, Jenkins. I mean, you've done amazing. You're going to keep doing amazing. If you haven't checked out the project, there's something wrong with you. If you listen, <laughs> no, but seriously, go check it out. We'll put all the links in the description below. And um, yeah, just thank you both so much. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it.